These three kinds of power meters can pretty much cover any of the mechatronics projects you want to build. We have USB or USB-C type meters. They're very affordable. Then you have the PowerWorks or off-brand PowerWorks for higher powered. This one says up to 150 amps. This is what the name brand unit looks like. And the knockoffs are nearly accurate um, compared with the, the name brand. Then you have the CBA um, computerized battery analyzer. This is version five, and we have this in the department as well uh, that you can check out from your lab coordinator. When you're starting your mechatronics project or electronics project and you're designing, usually you'll have a microcontroller and you'll have some sensors or actuators that are plugged into it. And each of these has a power consumption information on their data sheet, but there are several good reasons to do the testing anyway, directly. Um, it's a good idea to take your sensors and plug them into the interface that they'll actually support them when you're measuring the power. And instead of measuring them individually, measure them in real time when you're calling on functions that utilize the sensors, like this infrared temperature sensor, then even if it's a 3.3 volt device, you'll get uh, actual power coming in at five volts that's converted on the board of the device that you're, that's hosting the sensor. This is more reliable because there's a conversion loss in uh, converting from 5.5 volts down to three volts. Um, and the same thing if you're running a Raspberry Pi or any microcomputer, it's a great way to verify how much energy your sensors will use by actually just measuring a delta in the power consumption of this device. So instead of um, calculating the power at 3.3 volts, you just say, what is the, the energy used when I'm just running my microcontroller? And then what is the energy used when I start reading from a sensor? And then, then you can take the difference. You can check back on your power meter, and you can log that as your real uh, power level. This model here is a little bit fancier, and it will give you three down to the one milliamp resolution, and it shows you how many watts are being pulled. If you're actually using a power electronic over USB rather than just sensors, you're gonna find it pulls a lot more current. In this case, it's almost one amp, so 4.5 watts. If you're using a wall adapter, it's going to probably claim 12 volts or something like that. But you're going to get a, a varying voltage coming out of it, and that's good to measure uh, with this type of meter. So you get your Ander Anderson connectors crimped on, and then you can see with no load, we're at 12.3 volts. And when we apply a load, it's going to drop down. Let's try out this 12 volt peristaltic pump. So we're going to always um, attach these alligator clips before we plug in our connector, our power, so that we don't have a chance of, um, of the clips contacting something and short circuiting. Then when we plug in the load, we can see how the voltage drops down and how much power is being pulled. You can hear it now, the motor's turning. Oh, it only dropped down a very small amount, 12.25, and we're pulling 4.3 watts. Let's try again with this higher power device that's going to pull, I think it's 10 or 20 watts when we turn it on. So this time, it's going to be... 12 watts getting pulled, 12.2 watts, and still the voltage held up above 12 volts. That's pretty nice at one amp. So a power supply rated at three amps like this one is gonna do pretty good if it's a decent quality. As you can see, it's important to test uh, in your real uh, connected situation because the wattage of the device depends on the voltage and the wattage will vary from the data sheet the power meter is gonna give you um, the post inefficiency 
values and the adapter that you're using or battery is going to deviate as you go uh, depending on how much power you pull and how nice of an adapter it is so the data sheet's not going to tell you everything and it's really nice to have real data Lastly, we have the computerized battery analyzer for very sophisticated measurements, but it has a really simple software on the PC and it communicates over USB uh, using just like a USB a printer cable to your computer. So when you plug this one in, it's useful for something like grabbing a battery that you selected for your project and then measuring how long will your battery last, what voltage does it carry throughout its, uh, its life and consumption while we're starting. The CBA battery software um, can discharge a battery and measure the current and the amperage and the wattage as we go. So we can click new test. This is a free software. Uh, everything in the blue box is uh, only for your recorded information. It's not uh, critical to set up the test. This is the whole test setup right here. We're going to set the cutoff voltage to be 17 volts. If you click detect battery, it's going to give you the voltage detected at the terminals without any load. And then um, we can set how many amps we want to pull from the battery for our test. And so we'll put that at four for this large battery. Then when we click start, then uh, that's okay. Then it's going to immediately drop down from a, a no load voltage to a four amp load voltage. And then this red line will slowly sweep down until it reaches the cutoff voltage where the test is automated and it will stop automatically and give you a total amp hours and watt hours. Another great function of this uh, machine is you can perform a charge monitor where you simply measure the, the charge, the voltage at the terminals while you either charge or discharge or manipulate your battery or your system overall and uh, see how the, the val value adjusts over time. The charge monitor test measures voltage, but it does not measure the current that you're consuming. So you just hook up your battery and then you can put something else in series, sorry, in parallel. Then in this case, I want to, I want to look after the voltages, the current as well. So then I'm going to hook up my appliance to the power works meter. Okay. Now I can see that I'm pulling 11.3 Watts and then I can collect data on here and watch as this battery voltage uh, powers down to see how long will my system last. This is a charge monitor test in real time. These are the data points collected with no load on the battery, and you can click to see the actual values. And the data indicates a lower voltage when we have connected the load. So to wrap it up, your three kinds of power meters that can pretty much solve all your issues is if you want to measure power and energy over time and actually have a log that's accurate, you can use the CBA. If you need to check the power consumption or power delivery of a fairly uh, high wattage device between 1 watt and 150 watts or more, you can use the Anderson device. And the USB power meters are great for all kinds of things, even if you need to make your own setup where you simply provide 5 volts to your device. You can create your own setup um, however you need to suit your application. And don't forget that by crimping the compatible terminals on your electronics, you might save a lot of hairballs of wires on your desk as you connect many other things in your project. You can easily find off the shelf components like this breakout board so you can provide your power over USB directly and you can take your measurements on something that might not have the USB connector and you can find loads of other off-the-shelf parts to make your ad adaptations easy, simple, and reliable, so that that reduces how many custom uh, wirings you need to do throughout your project and reduce the, the amount of mess on your desk as you work with many components at the same time.